field party took the cable car to a point 200 metres below the summit of Mount Tady. The final approach of the cable car to the summit station passes over a relatively flat area, the remnants of two former summit craters. At 3,555 metres the party had fine views over the floor of the Las Canadas caldera and most of the caldera wall. In the near distance the Montana Blanca fissure could be admired. Distant views of Gran Canaria and La Palma were also afforded. Fumarellic activity was evident, with active fumaroles sighted near to the footpaths. The peak of Tady is 3,718 metres above Datum, and circa 7,500 metres above the ocean floor. This makes Tady the third highest volcano in the world. Tady is one of the 16 decade volcanoes identified by the International Association of Volcanology and Chemistry of the Earth's Interior as being worthy of a particular study in light of their history of large destructive eruptions and proximity to populated areas. The pinnacles of Roca de Garcia are made up of volcanoclastic breccia representing an episode of gravity sliding within the Canada's volcanic edifice. The Las Canadas caldera is one of the most important geological structures of Tenerife. Stratigraphic, structural, petrological, geochronological and geophysical data suggest that the caldera resulted from multiple vertical collapse episodes that occurred during the construction of the Las Canadas edifice upper group. In various localities on the island, the field party were asked to sketch and interpret features and exposures. Field observations were recorded in notebooks. This exposure proved challenging with many geological episodes evident in the rock record. These interbedded scoria pumice relationships display the contemporaneous existence of two radically different magma sources in their respective plumbing systems. The phonolithic pumice was sourced from a fractionated magma chamber that fed periodic Plinian eruptions. A second, less evolved magma supplies Strombolian style eruptions. On arrival at the Cava del Viento Information Center, the local guide briefed the field party on the evolution of the cave system. En route to the cave entrance, the ecology, pedology and surface geology was examined. These canarian pines can survive forest fires and this was evident from the scorched specimens in this part of the forest. In places, the Pahoehoe lava has been deliberately exposed for visitors to examine. The field party arrived at the entrance of the Cava de Viento. Its name is due to the significant flows of air that occur in its interior. At 17 kilometers, it is in fact the longest lava tube tunnel on European soil, and one of the longest in the world. It was caused by lava flows from the Pico Viejo volcano. The labyrinthine network of galleries consists of three superimposed levels, a phenomenon that has not been noted anywhere else in the world. The sea cliffs at Los Gigantes are best approached from the sea and comprise of approximately 600 metres of thin basaltic lava flows. In places they are exposed three dimensionally. The flows dip gently seaward at 15 degrees southwest. The flows are cut by a number of sinuous, vertical, northerly striking dikes. Some of the dikes pinch out and others are truncated at various heights. 
possibly once feeding surface flows. Triangular structures of brown material are also evident and probably represent scoria cones, bisected by the cliff face. The cliffs mark the point at which the Atlantic bisects the ancient Tenno Massif. The basalts here are approximately 7.4 million years old and have been weathered and eroded creating an incised topography of interflue ridges and deep gorges. What a great place for the field party to cool off before proceeding to their next port of coal. At a coastal exposure known as Montaña Parada, the field party was set a task to interpret the stratigraphy of the exposures here. Field sketches were made of the exposure and initial theories and observations were discussed and recorded in field notebooks. The party were then encouraged to examine the sequence and to note down further detailed observations. The Anaga Massif at the northeastern end of the island has an irregular and rugged topographical profile. Here, the highest point, the Cruz de Taborno, reaches a height of 1,024 metres, modest in relation to the Teide Central Complex. At 5.7 million years old, Anaga, like Tenno and the southern Adai massifs, are relatively older than the Central Teide Complex. This means that weathering and erosional processes have been able to rework the local relief resulting in a complex of deep incised valleys and gorges with steep interfluve ridges. The coastline of Anaga is similar to Tenno, with steep precipitous cliffs punctuated by deep water cut valleys. The basalts that form this high ground also contain a dense complex of dikes. Outcrops are of both phonolithic and trachytic origin. The field party's day in the Anaga Massif brought a very exciting, action-packed week to a close. Oxford Geology Group were very lucky to have the support from our friends at Avcan and Teddy Astro. Las perritas de vino